Starting us off at number 10 is an abandoned carnival. Now, I have always known carnivals to be very upbeat and happy places, but I think it's safe to say after toxic radiation, they ain't so fun. Just a mile and a quarter away from the Chernobyl power plant is the small town of Pripyat. Pripyat was the town where most workers at Chernobyl lived and raised their families prior to the famous blast. Obviously, that is not the case anymore. What is now left of this once popular carnival is a decaying ferris wheel, bumper cars surrounded by overgrown vines, and an old rusty skeleton of a merry-go-round. It is said that the amusement park was set to open on May 1st, just five days after the Chernobyl incident occurred, but the people of Pripyat needed something to do while the reactor was melting down, so the town opened up the amusement park on April 27th. How charming. Nothing more sweet and fun than you and your family enjoying a beautiful Ferris wheel ride that sweeps in and out of toxic radiation. Ah, uh, it's the little things in life. Moving on to number nine, we have the Taylor Energy Spill. If you guys are liking this video so far, then smash that like button for me, the Christmas cowgirl. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of this, but chances are you haven't, because this oil spill was kept pretty hush-hush. Hardly anyone outside of Louisiana knew what went down. That's because they wanted to keep it all a secret in order to protect the company's reputation. Basically, back in 2004, an oil production platform sank in a mudslide after Hurricane Ivan struck. It said that 300 to 700 barrels of oil per day spewed from this site. This has been going on for more than 14 years. The spill was hidden for six of these years before an environmental group stumbled upon it and was like, What's going on here? Why is there oil seeping here? This is close to being one of the worst oil spills in US history. Like millions of barrels have leaked into the Gulf of Mexico, polluting the waters. To be more precise, they estimated that the spill leaked 140 million gallons of oil which is insane. In our eighth spot, we have Sellafield, UK. Back in the day during the Cold War, Sellafield was the site where weapon-grade nuclear material was produced for the UK's nuclear weapon program. However, in 1957, one of the wind scale piles caught on fire and 11 tons of uranium was on fire for three days. As a result, radioactive material started spreading across the Lake District. It was deemed Britain's worst nuclear accident. On top of that, no one was evacuated and no one received iodine pills. Why? Well, workers were told to keep it all under wraps and to just keep working like nothing happened. Things continued on until they found out that like golf courses, milk and chickens, among other things, were getting contaminated. That's when they were forced to tell the public about this. To this day, this place is considered one of the most radioactive places in the world. In our seventh spot, we have the Halifax explosion. This is said to be the deadliest industrial disaster in Canada. It occurred on December 6, 1917, when a cargo ship filled with war explosives collided with another ship in the Halifax Harbor. The collision caused a massive explosion. 2,000 innocent people lost their lives. 9,000 were injured by the explosion and the flying debris and collapsing buildings. Others were killed by fires that scorched the area from the explosion. On top of that, a plume of black, thick smoke filled and polluted the air. Moving on to number six, we have the reactive zone of Paris. During the 1920s to 1930s, a number of radioactive tests were done in this area. The tests involved salts of radium-226. They were carried out safely until the French army decided to take over, and they ended up seriously contaminating the area, and they never disposed of the radioactive waste properly. In the 1990s, 61 barrels of cesium-137 and radium radium-226 were found stored there. On top of that, there was 160,000 gallons of contaminated soil. Over the years, the area has been decontaminated, or at least they tried to. It never really worked. And in 2006, more contaminated areas were found. The whole time, the area was so radioactive and the French army tried to keep it all a secret, but the people living nearby suffered. A high percentage of people living in the surrounding areas were found to have cancer. Although they denied that this site had any anything to do with it, it seems quite obvious that it does. To this day, this place is considered the most radioactive zone on the planet. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the contaminated hospital. Back in September of 1987, two individuals broke into an abandoned hospital in Brazil. They then were going around taking some things, hoping that they could resell it and get some money. Some things that they stole were parts from a teletherapy unit. Little did they know that what they took home was highly radioactive. That night, the two men fell ill and began throwing up. 
Over the course of the next couple of days, things got worse. In fact, one of the men had his hand swell and he had to get it partially amputated. But they didn't know what was making them sick. Plus, they didn't really want to tell people like, oh hey, we broke into a hospital and stole some stuff, so they kept it all a secret. And then one of the guys actually dismantled this radioactive object and was like, oh, what do we have in here? He ended up spreading cesium over a large area. As a result, four people died and 250 others were injured from exposure to the radioactive materials. A total of 112,000 people were exposed to the radioactive material. On top of that, the men's homes were demolished because they were so contaminated, and a number of other areas had to be decontaminated. To this day, this is said to be one of the world's worst nuclear disasters and one of the world's worst radiological incidents. In our fourth spot, we have the Exxon Valdez oil spill. On March 24th, 1989, one of the worst man-made disasters in US history took place. So on this day, an oil tanker owned by Exxon Shipping Company spilled 11 million gallons of crude oil into Prince William Sound. So just after midnight that day, the ship hit a reef. The collision caused the ship's hull to tear open and all that oil spilled into the water. Turns out that the captain of Exxon Valdez was drinking at the time of this event and also was not qualified to steer such a massive ship. This spill impacted 13,000 miles of coastline. It killed hundreds of thousands of birds, otters, seals, whales, you name it. Even to this day, this area is still heavily polluted. And to think it could have been easily avoided had they had a different captain of the ship. And most like the other disasters on this list, the company tried to keep it all hush hush, but in the end, the truth revealed itself. Coming in at number three, we have the North Korea nuclear accident. North Korea is a very secretive country. It's hard to know what really goes on there. What we do know though, is that North Korea is openly creating nukes and missiles and experimenting with these nuclear weapons. According to a number of articles, one of these tests in 2017 didn't go so well. 200 nuclear workers were killed at Kim Jong-un's testing facility. Basically, they're doing so much nuclear testing that the ground just can't take it anymore. I mean, in 2018, a mountain collapsed after more nuclear testing. But anyways, in this case, an unfinished tunnel collapsed, killing 100 workers. Then 100 more workers died after trying to rescue the first group. Now, this disaster is nowhere near as bad as Chernobyl, but I put this on this list because experts are scared and have predicted that in the future, the nuclear testing facility will most likely crumble. And when it does, a radioactive leak will occur, and it's said to be even worse than Chernobyl. So they're on the path to a very bad nuclear explosion or leak. In our second spot, we have the Bhopal disaster, also referred to as the Bhopal gas tragedy. This was a gas leak that occurred on the night of December 2nd to the morning of December 3rd in 1984. It occurred at the Union Carbide India Limited pesticide plant in Bhopal, India. Apparently, the pipes were lacking routine maintenance and that caused a backflow of water into a tank containing methyl isocyanate gas. That's what caused this gas leak. This is said to be one of the world's worst industrial disasters. Over 500,000 people were exposed to this gas. It seeped into the town surrounding the plant. It said that the death toll was 2,259, but later it was revealed to be much higher with 3,787 deaths. Some even believe it was up to 8,000 deaths but the government is concealing the true number of deaths from this tragedy. On top of that, over 500,000 people were left injured, including nearly 4,000 permanent injuries. And in our number one spot today, we have the Kishchim disaster. On September 29th, 1957, an explosion occurred at a plutonium production site for nuclear weapons and nuclear fuel reprocessing plant in Russia. It was built during the late 1940s as part of a Soviet program to develop nuclear weapons. It was a secret facility that people did not know about. Well, on that day, the cooling system containing radioactive waste failed and no one even noticed. The waste started to heat up and eventually exploded at 350 degrees Celsius. 20 million curries of radioactive material flung into the sky. It got picked up by the wind and spread over an area of 20,000 square kilometers. 270,000 people were living in the affected areas. And what's worse is that the Soviet government refused to let people know what happened. 
No one evacuated and hundreds of people died from the radioactivity of the area. Hundreds of others suffered from radiation sickness. It wasn't until 1989 that the Soviet government acknowledged what happened. At least in Chernobyl, people were told what went down and then were forced to evacuate. Starting off this countdown, we have the Three Mile Island nuclear accident. This disaster is said to be the most serious nuclear accident in US history. It took place at the Three Mile Island plant in Pennsylvania. At 4 a.m. on March 28, 1979, a number of equipment failures took place. A pressure valve in one of the reactors failed to close, so the cooling water contaminated with radiation was draining into other buildings. Things. And then the control operators didn't know how to deal with this. And soon the reactor heated to over 4,000 degrees, and radioactive steam seeped out of the building. Although no deaths or injuries were reported, it's believed that this leak caused a number of cancers and infant deaths in the area. Of course, the company downplayed the event. They were like, oh, nothing really happened here. No, 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 no radiation leaked out. But that's not the case. In the end, only pregnant women and small children were told to evacuate the area. But those that stayed suffered the consequences. In our ninth spot today, we have the ghosts. A number of people lost their lives over this terrible disaster. And it's believed that their souls are still around, haunting Pripyat. This one story in particular will give you the chills. It was told by nuclear physicist Andrei Karsukov. He visited the area in 1997 and claims he encountered a ghost. So when he arrived, he went to the power station and went to the number four reactor. That's where the explosion occurred. Now, he was there taking radiation readings when all of a sudden he heard someone screaming for rescue from a fire coming from inside. He said that it was impossible for someone to be inside of the old reactor room. For starters, the door requires a password and a handprint. And not only that, it would have tripped an alarm if someone managed to get inside. Yet, the screaming was clearly coming from inside. It sounded like someone was desperately trying to escape. So he might have heard the ghostly cries from someone who lost their life in the power plant explosion. Isn't that scary? I think so. Number eight, silhouettes of missing townspeople. Before I go any further on this one, let me just say that these silhouettes are not actually of real people left after the blast. A couple of sneaky and daring graffiti artists said to be from Germany and Belarus snuck into the radiation zone and thought it would be a good idea to spray paint silhouettes of people who once lived in this beautiful little community. So these pieces more or less resemble what once was rather than resembling actual humans from the town. That being said, there are some unique silhouettes through the radiation zone such as a little girl with pigtails reaching for a light switch in a random abandoned room. Somewhere outside, a boy pulling a truck towards a corner of the building as well as silhouettes of random people dancing and to finish it off, a small group of children jumping together in terror of the blast. Pretty morbid, if you ask me. Whether these silhouettes are based on specific real people or not, these random silhouettes are definitely a haunting thing to see, and I don't want to see them. Coming in at number seven, we have the Bloody Red. The Bloody Red, or the Red Forest, is the name given to the forest area around Chernobyl. Why is it called that? Well, this area received a lot of radiation fallout. As a result, the trees turned this bright orange color and then died. Nowadays, not a single tree can grow there anymore. In fact, this area is considered the most radioactive land area on the planet. Yes, on the planet. Obviously, as a result, the 400 hectares of land are off limits. It's strictly prohibited to go in there. I mean, duh, unless you have a death wish and want to die from exposure to radiation. What's also scary is that in 2015, a fire broke out in the forest, and even more radioactive material was released from this burning. So yeah, that forest is a big no-go zone. Also, could they have given it a creepier name, like the Bloody Red? Really? Really? Coming in at number six are piles of creepy dolls. Creepy dolls. I have seen plenty of horror films in my time, and nothing creeps me out more than a creepy, probably possessed, old doll. All through Pripyat, piles of dolls and doll heads can be seen in the randomest of places. Everywhere from windowsills, piles of debris, bed frames, tree branches, literally everywhere. Now, some of these dolls may be left over from the blast, but odds are they are all placed there by cheeky horror fans wanting to place their own touch on the Chernobyl site. Some of these are even propped up in specific poses with gas masks on. Annabelle, if you're watching this, you stay in your glass box. You got that? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Hospital of Death. 
This is said to be the deadliest hospital on the planet. So after the nuclear disaster, this hospital began quickly filling up with a number of sick and injured citizens. Nowadays though, obviously the hospital is abandoned. But the basement of the hospital contains a dark secret. In the basement, there are piles of first responders clothing. These clothings belong to the first responders like the firemen, who were on the scene immediately after the explosion. Obviously, the clothing they wore when they rushed into the building is now highly contaminated, and still to this day emit dangerously high levels of radiation. So they were just dumped in the basement because they didn't know where else to get rid of it. In fact, the radiation in this building is 4,000 times higher than normal. It's crazy. Number 4. Radiation Eating Fungus In the words of Jeff Goldblum, life uh, finds a way. Currently, there is a fungus growing inside the damaged fourth reactor of Chernobyl where radiation levels are still insanely high. Discovered by scientists back in 2002, this fungus, when tested, showed that when exposed to higher ionizing radiation, it would actually grow faster. What happened to the tested fungus after? <laughs> Who knows? Either way, I do wish I could have been there to test it with the other scientists because I hear they were some pretty fun guys. <laughs> I'll show myself out. In our third spot today, we have the mutated animals. The Chernobyl nuclear disaster had devastating, lasting effects. The nuclear material leaked into the soil, contaminating food and water. In fact, the radioactive materials leaked into pastures and was eaten by cows, and then was later found in their milk that children were drinking. But let's talk more about these farm animals that were affected. There were tons of weird mutated animals born near the disaster zone after this incident. Pigs, goats, and horses were born with messed up faces and extra limbs, or were just weird colors. Nowadays, there's a lot of stray dogs that roam the area. Sadly, because of their exposure to the radiation, they don't live a long life. And they may have a number of health issues. Coming in at number two is quite possibly the strangest but most obvious thing you will find in all of Chernobyl. Tourists! Apparently, around 12,000 tourists visit the exclusion zone every single year. One tourism company promises 11 hours of excitement with a respirator and a dosimeter included. There are even some nearby hotels that request you leave your radioactive shoes outside and don't bring them into the hotel with you once you return. No matter how safe or unsafe you think it is to visit the exclusion zone, quite obviously thousands of people from around the world go and visit every single year. Honestly, it does seem kind of cool and I'm sure there's a gift shop somewhere that sells shirts that say, I went all the way to Chernobyl and all I got was this shirt and an extra thumb. I'd buy that. Hey, Lizzie, you want to go to Chernobyl with me? No. Okay. <laughs> and in our number one spot today, we have the stalkers. This is absolutely insane. I don't think you guys are ready for this one. But the Stalkers is the name given to a group of Russians and Ukrainians that romanticize the apocalyptic environment of Pripyat. They sneak into abandoned buildings and explore them. Sometimes they even sleep over there. Also, to make matters weirder, they bring a gauger counter to see how much radiation they were exposed to on their journeys. Not only that, but apparently they also like to eat the fruit that grows in the danger zone. Like this is their definition of fun and they just love it. I highly, highly, highly recommend you don't do this, you know, for a number of obvious reasons. But like I said, the stalkers love this. Starting off this countdown, we have the sarcophagus. Basically, this is a massive steel and concrete structure that covers the Chernobyl power plant. It was designed to help contain the radiation. The construction of the structure lasted for 206 days, and those working on it had to work in shifts of no more than 7 minutes. Any more time spent near the reactors would have killed them. But still, they did sacrifice their lives building this because thousands of workers still died from exposure to the radiation. Those that survived got severely ill, and majority of them developed cancer. Nowadays, the sarcophagus is still there, but it's beginning to crumble. In 2019, they were in the process of dismantling it because it was going to collapse. So a new one is currently being installed. That's probably the scariest thing in Chernobyl because of how deadly the building it's containing is. Coming in at number 9, we have the gas masks. And if you guys are liking this video or want to see part 3, then smash that like button. Chernobyl already looks like the place where an apocalypse occurred. Buildings are completely abandoned, run down, and overgrown with nature. What doesn't help is the piles upon piles of gas masks scattered all throughout Chernobyl. This really adds to the eeriness of this place. And again, 
makes it look like a place where a zombie or alien takeover occurred. In fact, there is one room inside a school which is just completely filled with child size gas masks. It's very creepy, but also sad. Like imagine how frightened the young children were when this happened. The gas masks found there are just a sad reminder of the horrors that took place there when the reactor exploded. Moving on to number 8 we have the rotting toys. Littered all throughout the city are toys or personal belongings people had to leave behind. The saddest thing to see are pictures of children's toys left behind. Like I just think that was probably someone's favorite little dolly. Go anywhere there and you'll find items scattered everywhere, now broken and covered in filth. Like imagine, you're rushed out of your home and have to leave behind all your personal belongings. That must have been so hard, I can't imagine how everyone must have felt. It's really depressing to think about. Moving on at number 7 we have the examination chair. So uh, this one is pretty strange, but somehow a gynecologist examination chair ended up in the middle of the woods outside of a hospital. Not only is that super weird, but it's also super creepy. It's all rusted and beat up and looks like an old torture device. Not only that, but that means someone had to go inside the abandoned hospital, find that chair, and then carry it all the way back down and into the woods. I got a lot of questions. Why would someone do this? And how long did it take them to do this? And again, why would someone do this? Either way, it makes for a very spooky encounter. Moving on at number 6 we have the abandoned cooling tower. A partially constructed cooling tower can be found at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. They were built to evaporate the cooling water from the two new reactors. Sadly, they were never completed. Now, these things are massive. The diameter was over 120 meters and it stands at 150 meters tall. Obviously, after the accident, there was no need to continue on with the construction of this, so the government just left the towers there along with everything else. Eventually, over time, nature will have its way with it and it will start to erode and crumble. It's just crazy seeing all these abandoned infrastructures. Imagine how life would have been if that explosion never happened. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the toxic river. There's a river that's just filled with radioactive water right near the reactor. The scariest part is despite how toxic the water is, a bunch of aquatic life live there. In particular, giant catfish. Yes, giant catfish. A video from 2016 shows a massive catfish swimming in the water. People originally were like, oh my god, what the heck is that? It must be some sort of mutated animal. Later, it was just found out to be a giant catfish. But still, what the heck? And it's the fact that they have adapted to be able to survive in that highly toxic water. Like, that just baffles me. Not only that, but they can thrive there because the water has no higher predators. Obviously, though, you're not allowed to go fishing there. Okay, I feel like that's a given, but I also feel like people would still try it, so I'm just gonna say it. Don't go fishing there. In our fourth spot, we have the jarfish. Speaking of fish, we're gonna go with this. So back in 2016, photographer and journalist Miriam Wazer took a trip to explore the ruins of Chernobyl. While inside an abandoned building, she came across something very creepy and odd. She found a bunch of fish and other specimen in jars. Why someone was collecting fish, it just baffles many. And they weren't even like proper beakers or science mason jars. No, no, it looked like someone emptied out their jar of pickles and then used it to store the specimen. I think it's best if those remain untouched. Like, can you imagine how stinky they would be if they were open nowadays? They would reek. Old stinky fish is not something I would ever want to handle. Now the other specimen beside the fish are unknown. No one knows what the heck they are. But if you know, let me know in the comments below. Coming in at number 3 we have the abandoned hospitals. The hospitals at Chernobyl are quite eerie. They're just filled with rusted, empty hospital beds, littered syringes and more. The walls and floors are cracking and there's dirt and questionable red marks on the floor. I think the saddest thing though is that these hospitals are often trashed with medical supplies just tossed everywhere. The days after the explosion happened, people were frantically rushing to hospitals. Hospital staff were overwhelmed by the amount of people there. This moment is still preserved in the hospitals to this day. It's pretty dark once you think about it. And at number 
number two today, we have the Sad Alley. The Sad Alley, or the Alley of Memory, is an alley in the Ukraine created in memory of the villages and residents who had to flee from their homes during the disaster. Basically, it's a walkway with signs lining the sides. These signs are names of cities and villages that had to evacuate and leave everything behind. It's a way to ensure we just never forget the impact that this disaster had. It's really sad. And in our number one spot today, we have the radioactive spiders. Yes, you heard me correctly. Imagine if Peter Parker got bit by one of these bad guys. He'd be like a weirdly mutated Spider Man or something like that. But, anyways, the spiders in the exclusion zone are radioactive. So, you definitely don't want to be bit by one. Oh, wait, it gets worse. They also make radioactive webs. Yeah, you heard me, that's a thing. So, you don't have to just worry about these spiders, but you have to worry about walking through their deadly webs. Like, what the heck? No, thank you. Nah, -uh. I'm not a fan of spiders, but imagine radioactive ones. That sounds like it belongs in a horror movie. Radioactive, radioactive. Starting us off at number 10 are Dewey's old favorite dolls. Remember this one? Yeah, so in case you missed a few of our other Chernobyl videos, there are large piles of creepy, most likely possessed, burned up, radioactive dolls everywhere. Where are they coming from? Well, odds are most of these are actually coming from tourists and people looking to grab that one spooky and scary pick for the gram, but no one knows how this all came to be. It's hard to know if this started from actual dolls that witnessed the explosion or if someone just had the bright idea one day to start adding messed up dolls all over the exclusion zone. In the end, we will never know because unless you are a regular there at the exclusion zone, it's hard to distinguish which dolls have been there since day one and which ones are new additions. Either way, I hate all of it. At number nine, we have missing silver filters. Remember those pile of creepy dolls? Yeah, of course you do. It literally just freaking happened. Well, in addition to the piles of dead dolls, there are also piles of old gas masks everywhere, especially in one old school classroom. Some cheeky and hilarious, sick person even put some of these masks on dolls. Isn't that great? Anyway, what is mysterious about these gas masks is that these filters inside of all of them have been removed. And these filters contain just a small amount of silver in them. And what is most likely what happened is that looters came and took all of them. But what was done with the silver? No one really knows. If looters did indeed steal them, then I'm guessing that somewhere out there some people have radioactive jewelry or even silverware because they most likely sold it. It's hard to say, but if any of you watching have your own Geiger meters at home right now, I would check it out on anything silver in your home because you might just have a Chernobyl souvenir without even knowing it. At number eight, we have Survivor Immortality. While this one doesn't take place in Chernobyl exactly, it stems from Chernobyl. One Russian scientist who survived the explosion back in 1986 and six other Russian scientists have recently relocated to the small Greek island of Gados. There is some conspiracy though because some believe that these scientists actually relocated to the island to become immortal. Gavdos has 50 residents in total on the island and it is believed to have mythical healing powers that make its residents immortal. Reporters from Vice interviewed a filmmaker who was making a documentary on the island and found out that the scientists work on various inventions from inside the local compound. They also have seven acres of land that was given to them by a priest. Some think these Russian scientists are spies, while others believe they moved out there to not only become immortal themselves, but also clear them of all the radiation using the mystical powers of the island. They are apparently also building a temple named the Temple of Apollo. I think these guys were a little too close to the blast, if you know what I mean. At number seven, we have the random examination chair. Out in the middle of a wooded area in the exclusion zone is a random gynecologist chair. How the hell did it get there? <laughs> No one freaking knows. It can only be assumed that this chair was picked up by some local pranksters who went through the trouble of picking up this radioactive artifact and brought it to a random spot in the woods. But that is so much freaking work. I mean, guys, why? Aside from that, every other possibility is straight up terrifying. Maybe the blast blasted the chair out in the forest, but if it did, then why was there one of these chairs so close to a freaking radioactive reactor? See, it, it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So it's just another unproven, less than appealing site that can be found in the exclusion zone. 
At number six, we have silhouettes. You may remember this one from one of my other Chernobyl videos too. The mystery here is we have no idea if these silhouettes are actually based on real people or if it's just a morbid art piece done by another Chernobyl creepy artist. New silhouettes show up all of the time, all over the town of Pripyat, and the only other mystery here is who is behind it? Is it one talented artist or is it a group that has decided to take turns so no one ever gets the true answer? No matter what, these things sure do add to the creep factor of this ghost town, and I'm sure it's also a terrifying sight to see at night. Coming in at a halfway point at number five, we have a Chernobyl cover up. In a documentary titled The Russian Woodpecker, Fodor Alexandrovich explains a conspiracy theory that the Chernobyl blast was actually orchestrated to cover up the failure of the Russian Woodpecker. Now, it wasn't a Russian bird or the Russian version of Woody the Woodpecker. The Russian Woodpecker was actually an array radar that was meant to detect missiles before they were launched. The device was named after its woodpecker like sound it would make during its operation. It cost 7 billion rubles and unfortunately did not work. Work. It is suspected that it didn't work because of the northern lights messing with its signals, but it can't be for certain. So instead of suffering this terrible embarrassment, the Chernobyl plant that was known for its instability blew up, distracting everyone from the failure of the woodpecker. It's hard to say how likely all of this is, but when shooting the woodpecker documentary, apparently some pretty weird stuff happened to the documentary crew, such as visits from secret police services, as well as even one crew member being shot by a hidden sniper during the Euro Maiden protests. Whatever the truth is here, it sounds like they were putting their nose where it wasn't wanted. At number four, we have no containment building. Back in 1986, when the Chernobyl explosion actually happened, there was quite mysteriously no containment building that surrounded the reactors. Usually there are containment structures around radioactive places, like the reactors located in Chernobyl. They are gas tight structures that are usually made of steel reinforced concrete, so it can confine fission products that could release into the atmosphere during an accident if one were to happen. Sure enough, we all know that one happened here, and interestingly enough, it was not prepared for an accident accident that dangerous. According to author Richard Mueller of the book Physics for Future Presidents, the science behind the headlines, if there would have been a containment unit around the reactors, Mueller believes that there would have been virtually no deaths. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if this coincides with any of the conspiracy of the Russian woodpecker as mentioned before. Maybe. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have alien saviors. In this case, they quite literally came in peace. An eyewitness by the name of Mikhail Varitsky claimed to have seen a large fireball of light hovering above the reactor on the night of the explosion. Later on September 16th in 1989, apparently there was another huge radiation leak, and it is reported that this same ball of light was seen in the exact same spot once again. Many believe it to be aliens that were actually protecting us from the radioactive blast. Some claim that the blast was nowhere near as big as what it could have been and that these aliens actually helped absorb and clean up whatever extra radiation that they could to save us. You know me, I'm all about the alien theories, but I'm not sure about this one. I will say, many say similar events happened during the Fukushima accident as well. Oh well, aliens, if you are listening to me right now and you did help us, thank you. Now, show yourself. At number two, we had the Blackbird of Chernobyl. In April of 1986, right before the explosion in July, many reported seeing a large creature that looked like a blackbird flying around Chernobyl. This creature was large with red glowing eyes and was compared to America's legend, the Mothman. Why? What's so similar between a large Mothman and a large blackbird? Well, both of these creatures had large glowing red eyes, as well as both showed up right before major events. The Mothman appeared and was spotted right before the Silver Bridge collapse in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Virginia in 1967, which reportedly killed 46 people. Some survivors of the Chernobyl blast reported seeing this giant scary creature fly away from the reactor after the blast. Many believe that this bird was a paranormal entity that was a harbinger of terrible things to come. Others believe it was just a large stork. I don't know what to believe here, but the idea of a giant paranormal creature that is similar to the one that was seen in the US 20 years before gives me goosebumps in the best way possible. I love monster and ghost lore, which is what brings us to our number one spot. And finally, coming in at number one, we have my favorite, ghosts. That's right, not just named a ghost town because it's abandoned, but also because there are many different spirits that are said to be found here. Andrei Karsukov, a nuclear physicist from New York, told one story after his visit to the area back in 1997. Karsukov reports that he went to the power station one day at 7.30 a.m. and visited the number four reactor in the sarcophagus. You know, the big containment unit structure that they should have had on there before the explosion? Yeah, that thing. 
thing. Well, he could not go inside due to the high levels of radiation, but once he was down there, he could hear screams coming from the inside due to a fire. So what did he do? He ran upstairs to the control room to get help and once he barged open the door, he was told that he was the first person to open that door in three years. He was also told that the only way in was where he was and if someone came in after him, they would have tripped the alarm. So it was impossible for anyone else to be down there except him. There was also a floodlight that turned on and off at very strange moments leading the crew to believe someone or something was in the building with them. But what was it? I don't know. You be the judge. Starting off this countdown, we have the residents. Believe it or not, but there are people that still live in Chernobyl, even though it's highly dangerous to do so. It's estimated that there are around 130 to 150 people currently living there. Many of them are older women. In fact, they have been given the name Chernobyl's Babushkas. Now, you may be wondering, how do they live there when there's no operating grocery store and stuff like that? Well, they live off of the land. They are still farming their family's land. The thing is, is the water and soil there is still highly contaminated. So why would they take this risk? Well, one of the elderly ladies featured in a documentary about Chernobyl's babushkas said, and I quote, radiation doesn't scare me, starvation does. After the nuclear disasters, these ladies fled their home, but over the years, they have all come back. Despite there being no hospitals or grocery stores, they don't care. They just wanna be on their homeland. And turns out their bodies have somewhat adjusted to the high levels of radiation there. In our ninth spot, we have the radioactive animals. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. The nuclear power plant explosion had a lasting effect on the animals in the area. First off, family Families had to flee their home and leave their pets behind. As a result, a number of stray dogs that are descendants of those dogs still roam the area. But it's not safe to pet them, no matter how cute they are. And sadly, because of their exposure to the radiation, they don't live a long life. And many of them have health issues. Another animal that is highly radioactive there are the boars. This is because they eat grubs, tubers, and roots in the soil where the radioactive isotopes have settled. Not only that, but birds and rodents have been found with tumors and cataracts, all from being exposed to the radiation in the area. Coming in at number eight, we have the creepy doll beds. There are a bunch of people who go around Chernobyl purposely trying to make it creepier. They have been given the name the disaster tourists. They have been known to take creepy old dolls and place them on windowsills or hang them from buildings, etc. They also did this really creepy thing in an abandoned school. They rearranged a kindergarten classroom and placed a doll on every single one of those dilapidated beds. That literally looks like something straight out of a horror movie. Seriously, out of all the abandoned places there, that one looks like it would for sure be haunted. In our seventh spot today, we have the ghostly figure. There are tons of ghosts that haunt Chernobyl. I mean, any place where a huge tragedy takes place is bound to be haunted. In this case, the ghost was captured on live TV. So sci-fi channel's Destination Truth went to Chernobyl and conducted a number of paranormal investigations. They even went to Reactor 4. While there, they saw a human figure appear on a thermal imaging camera. They believe that that is the soul of a worker that died from the explosion. They also checked out a number of abandoned hospitals and saw multiple figures moving throughout the hospital on the thermal imaging camera as well. Isn't that spooky? Moving on to number six, we have the elephant's foot. The elephant's foot is a large mass of black choria. It's given the name the elephant's foot because it's shaped sort of like an elephant elephant's foot. Now, this thing is highly deadly. It emits high levels of radiation. Anyone exposed to it for minutes could die from radiation poisoning. And guess what? Although it's not as active as it was back in the day, it is still generating heat and still melting down into the base of Chernobyl. The scariest part, if it comes in contact with water, another explosion could occur. Now, eventually the elephant's foot will cool on its own, but even then it will still remain highly radioactive. And no one should ever go near it. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the raccoon dog. This is a really freaking weird animal found in Chernobyl. When people first saw it, they actually thought Thought the radiation caused a dog and a raccoon to just fuse together. Basically, they are found all throughout the exclusion zone and they are thriving there. It's crazy to see how they have adapted to live in a highly radioactive area. Now, these things are freaking cute. 
it. In fact, they are the most observed animals in that area by scientists. Coming in at number four, we have the fire bugs. These are tiny but deadly radioactive bugs. They were discovered back in 2011 when two friends were out collecting flowers in the exclusion zone. Don't worry, they were doing this for scientific reasons, you know, to study the pollen, not to just create a deadly radioactive bouquet of flowers. Anyways, while doing so, they came across these fire bugs. They then went around collecting hundreds of these bugs, some from areas with higher levels of radiation and some from areas with lower radiation levels. In the end, they found that those exposed to higher levels of radiation had deformities. I mean, yeah, just as you suspected. Either way, you don't want those bad boys crawling on your skin for a number of reasons. In our third spot today, we have the mutated wolves. The wolves from Chernobyl are another animal that are most commonly studied by scientists. In fact, some have been tagged with GPS collars to help track the levels of radioactivity there. Here's the thing. There was this whole scary legend going around that the wolves living there got mutated and were now highly aggressive and massive in size. There were stories being told of these massive wolves hunting down humans and attacking any and every animal. Turns out that this was false. But here's something interesting. Scientists believe that the wolves there have been mating with the dogs there. And in the end, they are creating these large dogs that look like wolves. It's pretty interesting. I, I want a wolf dog. Another interesting interesting thing is that research has shown that the radiation isn't really affecting them. In fact, the wolf population is thriving there. As a result, they have concluded that humans have a greater negative impact on animals' lives than radiation does. Isn't that insane? It is said that there are around 300 wolves living in the exclusion zone. But again, like all the animals mentioned on this list, they are highly radioactive and dangerous to get close to or even pet. Coming in at number two, we have the tombs. This is one of the saddest things at Chernobyl. But basically, a number of individuals that got exposed to the radioactive materials and died had to be buried in basically a big concrete coffin. Let's take a look at a man named Vasily Ignatenko. On that day, he went to the roof of the power plant to extinguish the fires. Sadly, he was exposed to a lethal dose of radiation and passed away. He was only 25. Now, his body was still radioactive. So Vasily, along with 27 other firefighters, were buried under big amounts of zinc and concrete. They did this to protect the public from the radiation emitting from their bodies. They were buried all around the reactor. It's really sad that they didn't really get a proper burial. I mean, they couldn't. It was too dangerous to go near their bodies. And in our number one spot today, we have the Blackbird of Chernobyl. According to some survivors of this accident, they claim that shortly before the nuclear plant meltdown, they all experienced nightmares. They also received threatening phone calls and had encountered a huge winged bird creature. Legend goes that these were all warning signs that the disaster was going to happen. The creature they saw was a large creature like a man with huge wings and red eyes. Some even claim they saw it over one of the reactors as it went through the meltdown. This creature has been given the name the black bird of Chernobyl. So legend goes, if you were in Chernobyl and you see this creature, then something bad is going to happen. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have cows. Cows are one of the sweetest and cutest animals out there and it totally makes sense why people call them grass puppies. The area around Chernobyl was known for its agriculture before the disaster, so of course that means there were definitely a lot of cows that could be found. Since farm animals are not only expensive, but can also be used as a source of income, many people took their farm animals with them, but many of these animals had already been exposed to the radiation in some capacity, and while it didn't affect them right away, the newer generations saw much more of the effects. In 1989, many farmers began reporting birth defects in their animals, some being much more severe than others. As time went on, the cows became less mutated, but that doesn't mean the effects went away. As the cows continued to graze on feed that was contaminated, the effects became more internal. This has led completely normal looking cows near the exclusion zone to be begin producing milk that is toxic and not fit for consumption. This is just one of the clear examples of how even though the visible effects may have worn off, there are still lasting effects that we probably hadn't previously considered. In our number 9 spot today we have barn swallows. Any animal who lives in the exclusion zone have been affected by the disaster and that includes those who spend most of their time in the sky. I'm obviously talking about birds. The barn swallows in Chernobyl are one animal who have seen a change in their physical appearance that has lasted all 
all of the years since the nuclear meltdown. It is unclear why these birds have been affected greater than their land animal counterparts or if these changes will ever reverse to their previous state, but here's what they are currently dealing with. The swallows appeared to have severely deformed beaks, disproportionate feathers, some had partial albinism, and they were seen to have much smaller brains. Of course, some of these issues are much worse than others, and I'm sure these changes have significantly affected their ways of life, but of course they continue to adapt as time goes on. It is sad that this human made disaster has affected them in such a negative way, but the fact that they are still around really shows their adaptability and resilience. In our number 8 spot today, we have boars. Boars are often seen wandering around the exclusion zone, but they also make their way into the surrounding towns as well, which is creating quite a problem. Boars are a fairly common food source and it's not unusual to come across one, but here's the problem if you live in the area, how are you supposed to tell which boars are radioactive and which aren't? Basically, you can't until it's too late. The boars who aren't radioactive might come across and intermingle with one who is, but they also like to eat mushrooms and if they're searching for their food within the exclusion zone, it's a highly likely possibility that they'll find themselves eating a radioactive mushroom. This is posing quite a problem. In 2017, there was a study that found that approximately one out of every three boars that were killed in the nearby areas of Germany, which for the record isn't even that close to Chernobyl, have been found to be radioactive and super unsafe for human consumption. You'd think that being that far away would make you safe, but as we clearly now know, the effects of the disaster stretched far and wide. In our number 7 spot today, we have Chavalsky's horse. These horses first originated in Mongolia and were wild horses that became endangered. They first became endangered due to hunters who would often kill the stallion, which of course would provide many difficulties in terms of reproduction. These horses weren't doing well in captivity, which made things even more difficult. This combined with the harsh winters, which would often claim their lives, left things looking quite grim for this species. In the late 1990s, however, in an effort to help repopulate these animals, 30 of them were released into the Ukrainian side of the exclusion zone and it is believed that some of these original horses are actually still alive today, which is amazing but camera trap images have also shown young horses which means that they are repopulating which is a huge win. Their expanding population in such a harsh environment could mean that they might potentially be able to return from the brink and go on to continue as a species which is something we always want to see. In our number 6 spot today we have cats. In the rush of the evacuation, many pets were left behind in Chernobyl and that of course includes cats. With little to do and of course more kittens being born, this paved the way for a group of feral cats to take over the exclusion zone. These cats wander in and out of the zone and find all of their favorite snacks such as radioactive rodents or the less common radioactive insects. These cats certainly have had quite a difficult time surviving as they are a perfect tasty snack for much larger predators and are certainly not equipped to deal with the harsh winters, but even still there is said to be at least 100 stray cats living in the exclusion zone. There are efforts underway to have the uncontaminated ones put up for adoption, but the difficulty is in testing them and also re-domesticating these animals who have had to fend for themselves for so long. In our number 5 spot today we have dogs. Since we just talked about the cats who were sadly left behind, it's only fair we talk about the dogs too. It's strange that these two domesticated animals would have such different experiences after the disaster, but they absolutely have. There are far more dogs who have managed to survive throughout the years than cats, but that is most likely due to the fact that they aren't as easy to catch and eat as prey as cats are, but dogs have a whole other challenge, and that is they have a hard time hunting and feeding themselves. There are workers who continue to work the dangerous job at the plant, and they continually feed the dogs living in the zone, which is something that truthfully is so nice to hear. It is also said that there are dogs living in this area that have begun mating with wolves, which is only going to breed dogs that will be more likely to be able to survive on their own, which which I suppose is a good thing. Similar to the cats, many of the stray dogs are being studied to see if they can be adopted into homes outside of the zone so that they don't have to continue living in these harsh environments that they really were not bred for. In our number 4 spot today we have European Grey Wolves. One of the species of animals that has been thriving ever since the disastrous nuclear meltdown has been the European Grey Wolf. Due to the lack of humans in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, they have been able to thrive and it has been said that the wolves in this area actually have a population population that is 7 times higher than that of comparable sites. Researchers are still trying to figure out exactly why this is happening, but it has obviously shown them that despite the effects of radiation in humans, the radiation clearly isn't affecting the wildlife's ability to reproduce. So this seems like just a regular grey wolf, 
wolf. But here's where things get a little different. Just because the wolves seem to be doing fine doesn't mean they aren't radioactive. These wolves, since they're such a high population, are beginning to travel farther and spread out more, which creates quite a problem. Not that we're just going up and petting wolves, but if you did come in contact with one of these wolves, you'd be getting a high dose of radiation just by touching them. Touching a carcass of these wolves with bare hands is absolutely not recommended. So while it is absolutely incredible to see the wildlife doing so well in this zone, we are now faced with an entirely different issue that we haven't really ever had before. In our number three spot today, we have the Eurasian lynx. This one is on this list for a different reason than most. It isn't because of anything this animal is or isn't doing, but instead is due to the fact that this animal was once believed to have entirely disappeared from Europe. It was fairly recently in 2014 that researchers realized they had made a comeback in a big way. Similar to most of the animals we've talked about today, the Eurasian lynx has been able to thrive due to the lack of human population and interference. Their downfall was attributed to urbanization as well as hunters, and they were mostly wiped out in the early 20th century, although they remained in certain parts of Siberia. There is still a lot more research that needs to be done about these creatures to determine exactly how radioactive they are, and this will take time due to the dangers of the zone they reside in, as well as the nature of these creatures in general. But just being able to see that an animal that was struggling has been able to make such a comeback is probably one of the best things to come out of such a horrible disaster. In our number two spot today, we have bison. Bison are right up there with wolves for most dangerous radioactive animal, and that is due to their size, as well as the fact that they are a source of food for some. These huge animals can weigh up to 2,200 pounds and are certainly not an animal that is easily messed with. Many bison weren't affected by the radiation immediately, and instead it became much much more of an issue once they started eating food that had been contaminated. They like to feed on grass, and a lot of it, and the radiation didn't only affect animal life, but plant life as well, making their food source a literal feeding ground for radioactive material. Similar to the wolves we talked about before, running into these guys isn't only a threat now because of their size, but now because if you get too close, you could be facing some unsafe levels of radiation. In our number one spot today, we have spiders. I've talked about my hatred for spiders a lot on this channel. Channel, but to be honest, they keep doing cool things, so I have to keep talking about them. Okay, well maybe this one is less cool and more scary, but still, they deserve a spot. Spiders that are residing within the exclusion zone are of course radioactive, but it's not only the spiders that are now dangerous to touch, but it is also their webs. Spiders in Chernobyl are literally making radioactive webs, which is the stuff straight out of a comic book. These radioactive webs are also being woven in much different ways than they were before, which would suggest some sort of genetic mutation at play. Spiders were already a creature I'd like to stay far, far away from, but radioactive spiders really adds a whole other level. Not only are the spiders now dangerous for non-radioactive animals to touch, but walking through their web is equally as dangerous to those who aren't thriving in the radiation. So not only do you have to watch out for the regular old radioactive material, but now also the never-ending construction of radioactive webs. Great. Mm -hmm. 